afternoon and welcome to DKW. That's right, DKW discusses topics that are pertaining to women, pressing issues that are all about women and today's topic is no different. Today we're going to be talking about the truth behind motherhood. Is it the most beautiful thing in the world or are women these days saying, no thanks, I'll pass on that. We're going to be discussing that with a panel of guests so please stick with us but see what else is coming up on today's show. That's right, it's all about motherhood today and I'm joined by lovely co-host Sammy, how are you? Hi, oh, wonderful to be here again today. Oh, I'm glad you are here Sam, because you know I'm not a mum. Yes, but I know that you are. Exactly. <laughs> and I know you've got a lot to say about the topic, I right? I do, I love being a mother. Do you really? I do love being I'm a mother. I'm going to today to see if this is really but true. But it's really hard work, Shereen. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to away. you, it's very much hard work. Okay. And I'm sure our panelists, our beautiful panelists, who we have here today. I know, we're not alone. With us. We're not alone, are we? Well, please introduce them, won't you? I would love to. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to start with our lovely co-presenter, Diane, Hi, who's I'm here Diane. with us today. Nice to see you, Diane. Nice to see you again. Can I have your say on motherhood, quickly? I'm not a mother yet. You're not a mother no, yet? No, but I have many people around me who are mothers, and I can't wait to be a mother. Oh, wow, lovely. that's lovely. And you're a mature woman, so... Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd, I thought I'd get a that beautiful, 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 yes, yes, beautiful yes. mature woman. Beautiful mature woman, children. Right, can I hear from you, beautiful Hi. over there? Hi, um, I'm Kieran. I'm not yet a mother yet, but I do c take care of a child, so... Yeah. Right. So you, you, you take care of, care of a child. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In case you're almost a mother. Yeah. Wow. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Rosanna. Hi, Rosanna. And I am a mom. You are a mom. Yes, I am. You look very young. Yes, I am. I'm still in my twenties. You're in your little... early twenties. <laughs> yes. Are you in your early twenties? Me twenties. Yes. yes. Wow. So I am a mom. And uh, motherhood. It's hard. It is hard yes, work. Yes, it's hard what work. What you expected or? No, I wasn't expecting, but then it happened, so yes. <laughs> I'm what, learning. It's what you it? expected. Yeah, no, not really, no. I no. Was not <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear from. Hi, my name is Gulchin, and I'm a mother of a three-year-old girl, and I'm content with just the one. Right. <laughs> so no more for you then, no, Gulsi, no? Not for a while. Not till right. I'm 30, so I think about is it. Is that because of the experience with the first child? It's really tough and when you're younger, I feel like it's more harder. And when you're a single mother, it's even more harder. Yeah. So I'm just content with the one. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Heather. I am not a mother. Um, and I'm... I don't want children either, at all, in fact. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is, that, is, there, is, that, is there any particular reason why you don't want children? I've, um, from a young age, never from really felt age. the urge. Mm -hmm. It's never been there. And, um, yeah, it's just never been there. I've, I've got it's nieces. It's never been an urge. But that's fine. No particular reason. No, not at all. Just, uh, yeah, not been my thing. Possibly a bit too selfish. And it's Who your knows? free choice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Hi I'm, welcome. Thank you. I'm Vicky and I have three children. Wow, Vicky. Yes, Happily married? Yes, yes, I'm married and I've got a 15 year old daughter and two little boys, five and three. Oh, that's lovely. So, would you say that you're an advocate for motherhood? Would you say that? Um, I suppose I am. Eventually. Lovely. And last but not least. Hi, my name is Sushona and I don't have any children, but I love to work with them, but I don't <laughs> want any of my own. Really? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay, this is very interesting. It's it very, very interesting, interesting panel, don't we? Well, um, I can see we're going to have a lot of varied opinions and feel free to speak your opinion. Don't hold back. It's really fun. It's CKW. You can't really be wrong on the show when you give your own opinion, okay? I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> but before we get to you, let's check out what Jennifer Long had to say when she hit the streets about motherhood. What's the most challenging thing about parenthood? I think it is um, that big change from being a professional to being a parent and going back to the beginning and knowing nothing and just kind of uh, losing your identity as a professional, really. 
uh, and trying to and be bossed by this little creature. <laughs> you sleep less. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, and when they cry a lot. Yeah, it's not easy, but uh, it worth it. <laughs> finding the time to actually do the parenting, you know, finding the time within the day because we're all busy, we all work, they go to school, and actually finding time to spend time together and to help them kind of grow and be rounded. And more than that, patience. Absolute patience is entirely necessary, especially if you walk into certain people's bedrooms and find beds undone <laughs> and not done up. But I think... Um, the most rewarding factor of, of parenting is um, knowing that you've spent the day with them, you've enjoyed the day, and they're all asleep in their beds, sleeping nicely and kindly, yeah. Do you think you're a good parent? Oh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> yes, I do. It's really difficult one to answer. I think there's always, as a parent, you, you always constantly just beat yourself up. I mean, I think, yeah, I'm a great parent. She's living and breathing and she's growing and she's moving. So we try our hardest, but there's always things that you inherently beat yourself up over. I would say I'm an above average parent. I don't know about whether I'm good, but I know I'm above average. I try and spend as much time as possible. Um, I do get like into the shouty, angry man thing when they don't put things back where they're supposed to be or they don't do the right things. But generally speaking, I am kind of... <laughs> yeah. Do you think mummy is a good parent? Yes. Yeah. Think, think. I, 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 you like to know it. Is there a top tip for parenthood that you could give? Oh my God. Um, or, or maybe even anything that someone said to you? Um, I just, I think you're just really concerned that they're happy, um, that they're safe. Um, I have three children and they're all in their twenties. And yeah, I think I've done a good job, yeah. Really, it's all about developing patience. I'm sorry, patience, it has, patience, yeah. Patience, 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 yeah. You have to kind of like be willing to, um, take the time to understand where they're coming from because as much as you want to achieve what you need to achieve during the day or during the week or during the year they kind of have their own ideas as well and you have to be very aware of the fact that they've all got their own personalities and they all enjoy doing different things so you've kind of got to adjust for that fact uh, just be kind to yourself <laughs> yeah exactly um, you know you you're, you're a good enough parent if you give them all your love and affection Well, that was very interesting when the guys spoke about patience. Everyone in the studio was like, yeah. yeah. Very true. <laughs> Key attributes. Okay. That's right. So, we're on DKW and we've got a specialist game, red and green cards. If, if you don't know where it is, I don't know where you've been because it's <laughs> something that we've copyrighted now. Exactly. <laughs> what happens is, panellists, as you see, you've both got one. Green, we'll ask you a question. Green will mean yes and red will mean no. So Sam's going to ask you the question first of all, and then if you agree with the question, then you set, you can put up your green card, and if you disagree, you put up your red card, and then we'll just you know pick a few of you to see why have you exactly come up with that opinion. Are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right, let's go. Okay. So the first question is, do you think you're a good parent? For those who are a parent. <laughs> a parent. <laughs> <You've got both> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> right. So either one or the other. One or the I other. I can't imagine anyone <laughs> saying say they're they're not no. a good parent. Well, we're yeah. right for a second there, yeah. just on the fence. <laughs> oh, oh, who, nice. who th well, those who have got children, <laughs> do you think that you would be a good, a good parent? Then mm. you can join in with us as well. <laughs> oh, see, I can't imagine anyone saying, I'm going to be a bad parent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'd be a good mum. That's very sincere of you, Cherie. I, I, do you know what? She said something, and it really got me thinking. She said, I, I think maybe I'm a bit too selfish, that's why I don't want to have children. And I actually feel a bit like, <laughs> I just feel like I don't want to have children. Oh, it's too much work, too much time that I don't have. You know, I'm doing other stuff, and I'm kind of happy with my life. And I think, oh, my gosh, if I have a child, I have to give up half them things. I don't think I'm ready for that. Well, I, I just wish that people would think down this road before they have children. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, they jump in the deep end, have the child, and then they don't, they're not willing to sacrifice. And I think then the, the child actually suffers for it. Oh, okay, who, who was, okay, this has got to be a question. This is a question. Who reckons I'm being selfish with my answer? 
I think you're. I don't think red. Yes. Yes. Red or green? Yes. Or no. Red, red or green? Green. Oh, oh. She says green. yes. No. She said no. no. Everyone's unanimous. So why do you guys agree? <laughs> oh, right. well, what's no. the, I want to hear from you. Why do you kind of share the similar okay. opinion? Why is that? Well, why? Why do you share the same yeah. view? Pretty much what you said, but I, I think when I first felt that I didn't want children, which again was like when I was a teenager, and people used to say to me, oh, you changed your mind. But my sister, they used to say to her, she always wanted kids and has them. They never said to her. But I think as I've got older, I realised it is because I don't want to give up loads of stuff. There's so many things I want to do. And you have to have a lot of time and you have to, yeah, you just got to give a lot of your time and a lot of your feelings and put them first. And I don't think I would. God, it makes you sound really evil. Um, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I don't want to give up loads of things, mm, but by. I do want a child. Okay. So I don't want to give them up. But I do want to experience <laughs> so, that motherhood. You know, just it's about it's finding one. the happy medium, and I don't know that I would. I would do that. Like you, I don't think I'm ready to go. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that mm. and now do this. I think it's you've got to find it. Well, not, yeah, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to ask some, another question. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think it takes to be a good mother? Patience. Come on, mother. Patience. I feel like it's discipline in your children mm. because when they you know that's that saying is easier to build strong men than repair broken men and I really as a mother that's what I take on and I've been criticized for discipline my daughter from a young age but I feel like if you do it when they're too old it's too late so for me it's you know disciplining them so when they go out in the you know real world they're good people so mm. uh, the other day we had a family meal and we were really disciplined growing up mm -hmm. and they were saying when you have your half of my sisters were saying when you have your your kids you're going to be so strict and the other half were saying nope she's going to be totally the opposite and that's why i put both cards up because mm -hmm. i think you know you're young and you think to discipline them now is a good thing but sometimes they rebel don't they i i, I can i can go with that one because i remember I, my i mean i had quite a, a strict upbringing mm -hmm. with my parents caribbean parents quite strict I wasn't allowed to do anything <laughs> <laughs> but i i picked up that um that line as and i was quite disciplined and quite strict with my my kids and when my my particularly my daughter as she couldn't wait at 16 17 she was off mm -hmm. she just wanted to get to uni and just enjoy her life Mm -hmm. because she felt as if so I think with with children and, and discipline you do have to have a balance I think yeah. you, you can't be too strict <clears throat> or too dis I mean I'd like to hear what what do you think about that <laughs> dear <Right>. mother you <laughs> you've got to set out boundaries basically yes um, and I think also you've got to have consistency with the way you parent as well and I think it's really important that you and your partner are on the same side when it comes to how you parent but I think you've got to give children freedom as well. Yeah. Otherwise, they do rebel. That's right. That's quite. That's quite. Because children play off each other, don't they? Mm. On the mums and the dads. So I think that's quite a valid mm. point that you're putting there. Yeah. Really good. Do you think nowadays a red card green? Just a quick question before we go to the yeah. break. I want to find out from you. Do you think that women these days are opting more to not have children because of the career, or is it more because they don't want to? Uh, is it more of a sense of the thing of no, no, I don't want, to, I don't think I, I can give that child the life that you know he or she deserves. So if you think that it's you know it's because of the career, put up your green card. If you think it's more because people are really being thinking and think I can't give the child what they really want, so let me just not have children. I think put up your red card. What are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, only one card, only one card. Sorry. <laughs> if, you, if you think it's more for the career, that's why people are like women are not having children these days. Do you think it's career or do you think they're just really thinking, no, I can't give my child the life that it needs, so mm -hmm. therefore I'm not going to have children. Do you think people are thinking more or do you think it's more? I'm so red card, no, green. green card, yes. Kieran, we haven't heard from you. Why are you saying that? I think it's... Um, well, it's, it's also because um, they want to give the best, but also I think it's more to do with career nowadays. You know, 20 years ago, they, everyone wanted to get married and have kids already, but nowadays it's more they want to focus on their careers and want to build up their life before they have kids. Mm. Um, with me as well, I'm, I'm like that. Though I come, my, I'm from an Indian background, and my grandma was already from the age of 16 wanted me to get married off. <laughs> <laughs> you mean an arranged marriage? Yeah, arranged my marriage already, and she's wow. done that twice already. So. 
But for me, I was like, no, Grand, I want to, you know, focus on my work, focus on my career. Let me build up my own life before, mm. you know, because it's been a disaster for your daughter. So why am I going to go down that same route? Ooh. So, no. We'll talk about more about that in a moment. Yeah. Hold on, Sam. We've got wow. to go to a break. Let's go to we break. We need that we'll break. We'll come back after to talk about this disaster. Please stick with us. More motherhood coming up soon. If you don't have a relationship with yourself, if you don't know you, if you don't love yourself enough to invest time in, to take good care of, how can you do that to someone else? But people are doing that all the time. You fail yourself, you reject yourself, you say bad things about yourself, you say, no, no one's ever gonna want me. That's why a lot of singles get rejected. Because they reject themselves because you think I can't get any better you know I can't I can't get anyone so at least I have him at least I have her and that person will abuse you will trample all over you because you don't respect yourself Welcome back to DKW and we are talking about the truth behind motherhood. I'm very, very proud of the ladies that we have on this panel, Sam, because they've been very open and talking about their opinions and yes, I know it's not very easy. Honest. Very not honest, easy. but I'm loving it. So let's keep it going. Back to truth. You, Sam, you're right. a parent. I am indeed. <laughs> I want to find out from you what's the best advice you've ever been given? How has it helped you? Right, I would say one of my um, best advice that I've always taken aboard is to always have you know, good, positive eyes towards your children. Mm. Because in actual fact, children aren't going to be always be perfect. I mean, you may have a set, you know, idea of how you want your child to be. And in many cases, they don't always, you know, set up to be how you expect them to mm. be. And I think it's really important to always keep good eyes for your children, no matter what you're going through with them. You know, I'm, I'm talking from experience. Mm -hmm. No matter what you see, you know, they may be having a bit of adolescence and things like that, but you've still got to persevere with your children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, always just support them. It's and, hard and I, work, right? It is hard work, but I think you mustn't give up on them. Mm. And that, that would be my advice. Don't give up on your children. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sam, and back to our panel. Yes. <laughs> what questions I mean, um, what I wanted to ask the, the panellists is, you know, sometimes we know, we know as parents, I mean, so, and especially you mothers, sometimes do you go with your gut feeling? If you have a gut feeling, about something relating to your child. Do, do you go with that feeling or, you know, something's telling you something? <laughs> no? I can exp um, what do you mean, like, in, if they're doing something wrong or...? Yeah, as a parent, sometimes you have a feeling about I, something. You know, my... you may be seeing something about the child. You know, for example, I, I, why, why I'm saying that, you know, a child may be going through an experience at school. Mm -hmm. Parents usually pick up on you know, things with your children and things like that. Do you go with your gut feeling or yeah. do you just pay I, no I, mind? I, I've experienced that and I've always, when I, I do get that gut feeling, if something's wrong with him, um, he's 12 years old now, um, he, if he's, there's something wrong, you can really sense it, mm -hmm. then I talk to him. Sometimes as they get older, they tend to close up, mm -hmm. but he's quite open to those you know, that know him and he does so, uh, as soon as um, I speak to him, he's like, "Yeah, I'm getting bullied at school, or, and I'm not. I'm feeling down about something." Or, and I'm like, "Wow." So, so you think it's good to trust your instincts? Yeah, I don't yeah. know if anyone else. Mm. Um, for me, I feel like other people really undermine a parent's gut instinct. Yeah. When you say, "No, I know my daughter," you know when it comes to their health, I know she's not well, or I know something's wrong with her, maybe teachers or doctors or fam, they were like, they really undermine a parent's gut instinct. So I would say as a parent, you should go with, because you you spend the most time with your children, their teachers Precisely. don't, the doctors don't. So a lot of the time I feel like as a parent, even though it's hard because everyone's saying, you know, you're just being overprotective, you're right most of the time. So you should go with your gut instinct. 
Mm. I do agree to disagree and as working with children I'm understanding from the teaching aspect because some parents are over worried so imagine in that field you have all the parents being over cautious about one thing it's a lot of workload so I think that's why as practitioners or as teachers and so forth you always try to sort of try to show them like another side like maybe it's not as it is mm. in that sense but um, I think gut instincts are the most right way and as working with children you always see like this, there are signs that for sure they will clearly show and like you said you spend the most time with your child so you know that child and we always encourage to build that open relationship with mm. your child to know that so I'm a bit I understand from the professional side. You wouldn't rely the, on it. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving that. I would like to hear what you lot think about hugging your children. Don't hug hugs, you. hugs, hugs. <laughs> What do you think? How often do you think you should hug your children? Um, I, I hug my children loads. I'm a really hands-on mum, but I've got a three-year-old who just won't put me down at the moment. He just <laughs> constantly <laughs> hugs me, and I'm trying to send emails, and he's saying, Mummy, I want to hug, all oh, the time. Oh. And he's just at that lovely, lovely age. But equally, you know, my five-year-old, lots of hugs for him. And I think it's really important as well, because I've got very young children, and I've got an older daughter as well. Then, obviously, I, you know, I hug her lots as well. I just Because they're older doesn't stop you being tired tactile with them. Wow, loving it. Mm. Can I say something? I just want to throw a spanner in the works. My mum, um, God bless her, she's fantastic. Love my mum. She does a very good job with me. Well done. But um, my mum always says to us that if she was to start her life again, she wouldn't have children. She would just, you know, enjoy life. But Ooh, she's been a wow, really good... strong that is. Yeah. But she's been a fantastic... The people that know my mum know she's a fabulous woman. She's been a really great mum. And my mum has said something. She says, but having said that, she said that women who don't have children they have got no clue what what sacrifice is and therefore they can never be the best women they can be so because she's been a mum she sees things at completely different angles than a woman who hasn't had a child and she goes learning to sacrifice as a mum brings out the very best of you as a woman what do you think about that that's why wow. I, said, that's... I want the child but I want my life as well. I want to experience <laughs> that one child to know what it's like, not just to have it as a trophy or mm. nothing like that, but to really experience that motherhood. You know, I'm not asking for four or five, <laughs> just one. Oh, you may have two to no, keep yeah, company with two, the other one. Yeah, two. <laughs> but just, just to have that experience, as mm. you were saying, Shireen, I really want to, to see that other side of things, that sacrifice. You know, my mum had five children and I saw her struggle mm -hmm. with us five children you know and I take my hat off to her mm -hmm. I really do take my hat any mum you know any mum single mum a mum who's married it's still hard work mm -hmm. you know so I do I do want to experience that who, who agrees or disagrees with that I disagree Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I'm dying to hear your disagreement on that I disagree only because I'm, the question that comes to my head is couldn't that woman get another experience in another way mm -hmm. in terms of being challenged or being the best that she can because not everybody I mean children is hard work but then the circumstances in which you've had to look after your child has made you force you to adapt and mm -hmm. make the most of the situation to be the best person so totally understand what your mum is saying but I disagree in the sense that there's other challenges maybe day to day life that we face so I'm I disagree. Okay. Wow. Okay, I mean, Goldstein, what are you saying? Cause and she's a mum, so And you're see. a mum. Um, I feel like before you have children, you're kind of naive to the idea of having children, but the world we live in is completely different to when our parents had kids. Like, for me, I feel like it's not a nice place to bring up children, and that's a sacrifice you shouldn't look forward to. Mm -hmm. Like, even primary school, when I was at primary school, it was completely different. Now kids know too much. Mm -hmm. They, you know, teach and stuff that I thought I would never have a conversation with my daughter about certain subjects that I never learned at school. So that sacrifice is not something I would look forward to if I wasn't a mother. And you know where you said um, single mothers and married people, it, it's completely different. It I is. get quite offended yeah, because is. when you have a husband, it's nice to have a children, child, but you need to remember there's a lot of mothers out there who want to have mm -hmm. a child without their husband. And being a single mother is a complete different ball game and that's a sacrifice that I feel like as a mother you shouldn't really experience because it's nice to have the a partner, partner. Mm -hmm. so that's why I disagree because you know yeah Vicky wow. I want to hear from you <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about my mum's comment well you it? um 
It, it depends for everybody. You know, everybody has okay. the, their own idea. But I think for me, I've, I learned so much from my own mum. And I think I, when I became a mum, I realised more than ever what she, she had done for us. Yes. And mm -hmm. I finally saw things through her eyes. And I think it takes being a mum to be able to do that mm -hmm. um, and to see the sacrifices that your own parents have, have, have made for you. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, as a mum, I think for me, my own children inspire me to do better because I see that, you know, I'm a role model for them. And it's, it's part of how I teach them that, you know, they, they can be and do whatever they want to be by hopefully being a good role model for them. Nice. Totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Loving that. Yeah, that's good. fantastic. Um, another question now. Let's, we're going off the topic a little bit mm. now. Children and different toys. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think that children should have different toys, types of toys to play? I mean, nowadays, the toy <laughs> seems to be a little bit more <laughs> digital. Even more than we know. Even more than I've what we know. IPads toys aren't everything. toys. iPads and all sorts. iPads, phones, At four years old, games. Four years old. I mean, what, what's your say on that, panellists? I'm in the middle with this one and again going back to working with them, I, I'm halfway through the technology thing because my argument is they're not going to learn certain skills if everything is touching the iPad because all of them know, I mean I work with like zero to five so mm -hmm. they all know how to work the iPad mm -hmm. but certain skills they are missing, <laughs> they know the passwords, they're very good with technology but certain skills they're missing like mm -hmm. let's say early writing and so forth because they're so into the technology. But, um, and another thing which is a big debate is boys and buggies and babies and <laughs> all of these things. And it depends on the culture and your background and your view on it. And it's a very debatable thing, but I think as long as you're sure within yourself to be open to that, because it's all part of learning. And yeah, so I'm, I'm a bit in the middle because my background would tell from a Caribbean background as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about the boys and the buggies thing. <laughs> well, the children like to play mums and dads with dollies. Yeah. And, and it's funny because when, nowadays you, when they you don't put it, actually. Yeah, when you put it that way, then, you know, but I just think boys and dolls, like, it's, <laughs> Should it should happen. It, yeah, you know, it's, it's not right. <laughs> it's, it's exploration. I, I, and I do, I do ag that's what, I'm on the fence with that, like, you know, I do like agree. The but ideology, you put your... In your conditioning that child to have in that sense. So I'm free yeah. to. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> with with the boys and, and buggies part of it, I my, my little boys when they were little used to just love pushing the, the, the buggies around and my husband was saying, you know, do, do, do babies do this? But at the end of the day, it, it, it is the ultimate sort of compliment they can give their dad because they've seen that their dad in that role cares for them and loves them and they just want to emulate dad. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, she just sees it with such great eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh no, I was going to say I I don't think there's a problem with mixing up toys at all because it's it's usually what we then think. Because I used to play with cars when I was a kid. I loved my cars cars more than any kind of Barbie or anything I ever had. I was definitely pre-technology, but but um, I've got no. I, I just keep them. I don't have anything to do with them now. And I think the same way with boys if they're playing with dolls, you grow out of it. It's, it's I don't think it makes any difference. It's what we think as adults. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what I'm thinking. Like, it's yeah, pack it right. in. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and, and funny enough, because that's what we pass on to your children, right? That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. That's, exactly. that's right. Yeah. Mm. All right, so we've heard what the panellists have to say about these views. What about you? Call us live in the studio, 027 We would love to hear from you. Now, stick with us, because afterwards, I'll be revealing some shocking facts, and we're going to be speaking to Vicky about a special product she has. So stick with us.
welcome back and we are discussing the truth about motherhood and our gosh According to this panel, I think it's only Di and Vicky that's f- fighting for mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is like, don't have them, don't do it. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Now, I've got some shocking facts. Yeah. Um, let me read one of them and then let's see what the panel thinks. So, it's estimated that for each year a mother is absent from the workplace, her future wages will reduce by 5%. Up to 30,000 women are sacked each year simply for being preggers. And each year, an estimated 440,000 women lose out on pay or promotion as a result of pregnancy. At least 75% of mothers have primary responsibility for childcare in the home. Ooh! Ooh. Right, panellists, were any of you actually mothers that stayed at home after you had your children, yes? Yeah, I was as well. You both? You both were? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I stayed till she was two. Mm-hmm. And I felt like going back to work, I had to work harder than everyone else and catch up. Mm-hmm. And that kind of puts me off having another child because I felt mm-hmm. like I would be put back to where I was when I had Layla. And I want to ca- kind of carry on going up in my career. So, you know, it is different when I do feel like women sometimes are penalised for mm-hmm. having children. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of promotions and getting a good job, you are behind from everyone else. Okay, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I think you definitely are. You know, uh, friends of mine who've took career breaks, you know, it's really tough getting back into employment after you've done that. For me, I was a stay-at-home... Well, going back to when I had my first daughter, um, the maternity um, setup wasn't the same as it is now, and I had to go back to it when she was very, very young, um, just because I'd not worked there long enough. And then when my boys came along, I um, had time off with them uh, because I just felt out I'd really missed out on that first time around. Mm-hmm. And it's it was just so much nicer, and you just bond with your children, your babies, so much easier when you've got that time to be able mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's a luxury. It is a luxury. Can I ask you? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do love her. <laughs> Your lippy's fabulous, by the way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> do you think it's fair? Do you think that, you know, at the end of the day, she's a mother, you're not, you're not a mother. Absolutely. You're both in the workplace. Yeah. Do you think that she should get anything extra, the fact that she's had to take time off? Any, what do you mean by any extra? Extra promotion should be, should be considered the same? No, I think everybody should be. I mean, in the workplace, but I'm going to look at it from a different perspective, maybe. I think in the workplace, everybody, regardless of whether they're a mother or they're not a mother, or whether they're a man or a woman, should be promoted or get extra based on their ability. Mm-hmm. But obviously, that's not realistic. Um, I think my simple answer is no, I think we would be, mm-hmm. should be judged the same. Mm-hmm. But that isn't what happens. And sadly, there's nothing I can do about that. I, you know, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Maybe support a mother, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, do any of you think that mothers shouldn't return back to work? Or you, do you think that mothers should actually stay out the full time, grow your kids to a certain age? If you could, I would think you? it would be really nice to be able to say that you're going to, you know, look after your child till they're two years old, like she mm. did, and not have to think about having to go back to work, you know, and find that money. To, for the childminder, because once you start work again, you're you're literally paying for the childminder. You know, you're you're literally only going back to work for sanity because you know it's so it's <laughs> so expensive. Let's be honest, childcare is not well. Cheap. That was no, going to be nothing back to mine really actually. Yeah. Well, I might as well go into it since you've really touched yeah. on it. Here we go. Childcare costs in the UK are highest in the, in the EU, and families pay on average twenty six point six percent of their income on childcare compared to um, another average. So, mm-hmm. unmet um, demand for formal childcare at atypical times is substantial. In one survey, 67% of parents working atypical hours struggled to find childcare to meet their needs. A survey of over 2,000 working mums found out that over half said they will be, will be forced to stop work or significantly reduce their hours as a result of having to cut, sorry, of the cut to support child cost cares. Wow. Care, child care costs, sorry about that. <laughs> so, what do you think about that? I mean, did any of you get childcare here? Um, yeah, um, I'd love to hear from her. Rosanna. Yeah, let's hear from you. Did, um, you. did you have childcare and was you able to afford it? Yes, I did get help as well from mm-hmm. the government for childcare costs, sorry. Mm. But it's like, I, still, I was still working as well at the same time. So even though they were helping, I still had to, you know, half of my salary you had to contribute contribute to go towards the childcare mm. cost because it's really expensive and if you find one that's actually it's not it's not cheap but it's actually good enough 
it's hard to get in because they fully booked because mm. there's a lot. Everyone wants it. Is there a lot of waiting lists? Oh, sorry. Yes, I give that. For child yes. Care. Um, there was one that I saw was really good, and it told me um, they only have space for next year. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> But next year he's four, so I don't want to go to school. So it's really hard to find it. It's not it is really expensive and working in childcare, let's say, especially with under two, so in with you guys saying it is best to stay with your child at home, mm. to be honest, and yeah. like with the government and stuff, early years, they're really pushing for early years, especially under two. And let's say on average at work, one child would cost, let's say 1,500 a month for uh, under twos wow. to be paid for for the month. So imagine that's a person's wages oh, sorry, yeah. is gone. and. <laughs> It is hard, and the good thing is now, especially where I work, we try to mix depending on where everybody's equal, but not everybody's like that, and a lot of places are private. So if you don't have, it is, you can't get in, and the waiting list is, ours is fully booked as well till next year, so I fully understand how it is. Wow. So it is expensive. Okay, so what about you, because you're a carer, and you're also, you're also very, you've got your own business, yeah. you work full time, so how yeah. does that work? It was very tough at first. I did get a lot of help and I did get childcare um, mm. from mainly his school, which mm. really helped out a lot. So even when he finished school, he would go to um, with the play group and he'll stay there until I finished work and went to go pick him up. But it was well, very... free, was it? Mm. No, no, no. You had to pay for all yeah, this. With the government's help. Yeah. Um, but again, because then as Amy got older, he kind of started realising like, okay, this is expensive because mm. half of my money was going on to childcare support. Mm. And he was like, Kieran, I don't want, I don't want to go anymore. I don't want to go. Wow. So he was even fully aware <gasps> of that. So <laughs> I think kind of go back to the yeah. question you asked. You know, um, why are mothers not? Why are people not having children? Yes. Yeah, because like they this. simply cannot afford that, it. That yeah. They really want the to have why. children, yeah. but they simply can't afford yeah. it. That's what has made me admit going two minds about motherhood. Even though Imi's, this, I'm, I'm taking care of him, it has put me in two minds whether I should take, yeah. take care of a child because. And raising Umi since he was three years old is just hard work. Mm. It's it's, hard work. I think it's really important to think carefully yeah, definitely. Yeah. when you're having children. Yeah. Yeah. But on that note, we have something very light. I'd yes. like to speak with our lovely Vicky. Because she has something very pleasant <laughs> to introduce to us. Yeah, when I was um, at home with my babies, when they were very small, um, like every multitasking mum, I had a baby on my hip and life doesn't stop you there, <laughs> baby here, cleaning spray, cleaning and, and so on. And out of that, I really did not want to spray chemical things around my, my children and expose them to the toxins that are in everyday cleaning products. Mm -hmm. And there were eco products out there, there were non-toxic products out there. But when I looked at them, none of them were really natural. Mm -hmm. wow. And they still contained all the synthetic scents, which, you know, uh, are not good for us anyway, because as women, they interfere with our hormones, all the synthetic scents. Wow. <laughs> Raised eyebrows. Yes. <laughs> well, does I mean, do you, do you, it's now a business that you yeah, do now. Vicky. It is, yes. And how long have you been doing it for now? Well, I started to, to formulate it really when, when the babies were very small. I used to mix up my own uh, products with wow, that's essential oil. Amazing. Um, but then, about two years in product development, really um, working with um, somebody who was very clever at green science to um, make the products that I've got today. And they're safe for the children. Yeah, perfectly safe to use around children and indoors and with your family. Right, can we have some examples? Sure, like to, <laughs> sure. I'd like to that for you. sniff away. Um, I mean, what's the name of your company? Yes. Tell us um, a little bit about it more. The, the name, Enlight us. The name of the products. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> told you I was multitasking. <laughs> um, the name of the products is Tickety Boo Naturals. Oh, cute. Tickety Boo. Um, and Tickety Boo, Tickety Boo like basically means as it should be, um, which is why I did this. It gets me really annoyed that, you know, why as women have we been given chemicals to clean with, mm. you know, that was progress. It's not progress at all. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for, for centuries, people have used with um, lavender and rosemary. You know, they've sanitised for years with, with lavender and rosemary. But oh, it's that. now the, uh, you know, science and nature combined. 
very nice. That is, that just, must smell just, absolutely. How did you get? How did you get into this? I mean, how? I mean, you were at home, you were working, you were a mum, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you took me this idea of oh, these products, you know, not really. But how on earth? I mean, what was the research? Tell us a bit more. Oh, lots of research. Um, one of the facts that I came across is that as women, women who work in their home are fifty-four percent more likely to have a fatality of cancer than women who don't work in the home. And that it was a government study that uh, sorry it was a, a study that was done in the states that was yes. a 15 year study, wow. and the final finding of that was because as women were exposed to um, toxins through chemical cleaning products. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm excited. I can just let's imagine your kitchen. Your let's see. Your let's see. Can I smell let's that? See. Do you mind? If yeah, I sure. I'll, I'll pass you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's get. Well, this one is... Go ahead. Can you yeah, hear sure. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, usually what ends up on my worktop at the end of most days. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jam and ketchup and yeah. pasta sauce. Okay. So with this... You put it on your lap there, yeah. Put it on my lap um, and take the safety nozzle off, which is always very important when you're working around children. <laughs> nice. And usually, if you're working with um, products like this, well, with any product, you should always let it penetrate for a moment. Of course. But with this, it's got a very small trigger because... It's actually the same as a bottle three times bigger than this. So it's condensed, it's, it's a very powerful cleaner. Smells lovely, sorry. It smells, <laughs> like, smells, like, smells <laughs> lovely, but will it cut all the germs <laughs> as well? Yeah, well, we're going to see. Absolutely, yes, because lavender and rosemary are naturally sanitising as well. That's fantastic So yes, to they know. do cut through the germs. Okay, let's hold, let's hold that. Because I think that would be my most thing, yeah, is it cutting the germs? Well, let's see, let's see. Sorry, I just got it all over my dress. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, there it is, it just all wipes, you know. Clean, All right, we off. need to show that to the camera. Can you see that? It's oh. clean. Rosemary. Yeah, this has been happily stewing on here for a good few hours yeah. now. To, to yeah, stick. I've been witness of that. <laughs> very, very nice. so have, okay, someone at home, a mother at home says, I love this product. I would love to get it. Mm. How do they? Uh, at the moment, it's available exclusively on the website. So okay. that's tickety-boo. Uh, naturals.com okay. and for anybody who's watching the show if they enter the code DKW16 Yay. they can get a further 10% off as well okay so let me say that again further DK, um, further 10% discount if you're a DKW viewer that's also very nice we're going to put your details on our website too Vicky thank you very very thank much you. we'll be trying that out Lovely. Oh, there okay. You go. Give that back to you. Thank so you. having children can have job opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Look, we're coming to the end of our show, but please, we still have a little bit left time left. If you would like to also call in with your um, your views, feel free to do so on 0207 686 6300. Would you have kids? Do you have them? Would you not have them again? Do you love kids? Do you completely disagree with all the other panelists today and love Vicky and I? I want to hear from you. Please call us. Join us after the break. Welcome back, and we have been discussing m the topic of motherhood with our lovely panellists today. We've been very, very open, and I, before we continue giving them more questions, I want to find out from them if there's anything they'd like to say to fight their corner. Oh, and there's silence in the studio. Okay, no problem. Absolutely fine, no problem. Well, Kieran, I know that you were saying earlier on, you were saying that about your family, you were saying something about disasters. How much of, you know, you growing up, um, and the influence that you've seen has affected your decision to have children or not? Like I said, I'm still in two minds. Um, my family is... Because, my, like I was saying, my gran was the one that arranged most of my like, aunts and uncles' mm -hmm. marriages, and most of them failed. So it was just all of them, like, in broken homes. So, like, my cousins, they're all, like, growing up in, you know, broken homes. Mm -hmm. So everything's just a bit of a mess. Same with the, my um, cousin that I'm looking after. He, um, his dad left and then his mum wasn't well. So he was the only person that could take care of him was me. And I was 18 at the time. Wow. So yeah. for me, 
I do love children. I really do love children. But at the same time, it's just watching all, the, all of that and seeing all that growing up, it's just made me think, should I, am I really ready to have a child? And if I do, I've got to really be in a stable home because I grew up in a single broken home as well. So for me, it's just like, but my mum raised me fine, you know. She was she raised me right, I have to say. My mum was a good mum. Yeah. And talking about like um having a discipline and mm-hmm. having that balance, mm-hmm. she did that with me. So she gave me that freedom. So mm-hmm. I never went straight mm-hmm. and did crazy things or mm-hmm. re- rebelled against her. I never had that desire to. Mm-hmm. But then when my cousins who've like their mum or dad has been strict with them, mm-hmm. they've went the opposite way. They've gone crazy, they've been doing all crazy things. I must things, say, so. motherhood in from my point of view, I'll be honest with you, it's Hard because you're not the only one raising the child. Yeah. You've got society raising the child. Yeah. School kids, yeah. You're, yeah. you're the teachers. You know, it's so many things, so many factors that to also help yes. influence yeah. your children. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the truth. You can be, you could try to be the best mum you can, but unless you lock them in the room with you, there is no way that they're not going to be influenced by other things they see. Yeah, that's true. And I think that is the difficulty with my mothers these days. I think there's so much pressure that you don't didn't have from back in the day, like all this mm. social networks and media, and everyone is, you know, fighting to have your child's attention and if you're yeah. not like hands-on your child is going to go away with them yeah i mean how how, how much do you agree with that girl i agree 100 yeah. percent yeah. i mean i, I, I want to know it is um you know especially to the ones that doesn't want especially the younger ones who doesn't want if you you don't want children now imagine you meet your perfect partner <laughs> And he wants children. <laughs> he wants to, you know, swift you off and have a beautiful life with you. And he, do, he, he really wants kids. I mean, how are you going to deal with that? Are you I'll still going to say, I don't want children? <laughs> I mean, are you going to get rid of the guy? Because you're, you know, I mean, what's going to happen? I think it would have been discussed um <laughs> uh, already i mean I, it's not that i don't mind having children but um even as kieran was speaking it is a very difficult thing and and unless you're in that stable home to provide that because i resented my mom for a long time mm. because of this because she couldn't manage not it wasn't her fault i understood mm. that but i resented her a lot because i was like why do i have to grow up so fast why do i have to be independent from so long why all of that so um i think i, I me and my partner would have to discuss it it's not a no, 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 but we'd have to have the same vision and goal. Oh, and, so you're changing. And, no, you know, I, 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 it was no, but I would like to it's travel. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's the selfishness thing as well, and it's, it takes more, it's a mental and emotional thing, and it's a lot. I'll say, yeah, we'd have to discuss it. I said no, but... Yeah, I mean, I do, I think, I do think it's much more wonderful when you've yeah. got, you know, two positive people yeah. wanting that child, yeah. you know, willing to sacrifice, building mm. a, a wonderful yeah, home for true. that child. Definitely. I think that makes all the difference. And for me, that's why I'm the mature one that wants the child, children now, because Good for you. I didn't want to be the single parent or or fall into that trap. It's not to say that you know you set out to have that. You always I mean, how, you set. How long, how long have you been married, Diane? I've been married four years now. Four years, so it's yeah. early days. Yes, it is. So you really, yes, yeah, so it's time yes, to yeah, really think basically, about but throughout my family. life, it, that was stuck in my mind. I didn't want to be a single parent, and I thought, you know, in my mind, I want to be married. To, before I have my children, I want to be married. You know, there's no guarantee. I'm mm-hmm. not saying there's a Indeed. guarantee, but you know, I wanted to do it the right way, basically. Yeah, to make the good foundation Definitely. for the children. Yeah. I mean, does anybody else have a spin on that? No? I think, you know what you said when you meet the right person? I do feel like when you say no, 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 it does change to maybe, because when you have that security, and I feel like that's why I'm so, you know, trying to say <laughs> people should see the reality of having kids because security, if I did have yeah. that security maybe I'll be more like Vicky like mm-hmm. you know for it because mm-hmm. it does make a big difference mm-hmm. and sometimes as a single mother you want to be good cop but you can't you have yeah. to be good cop and yeah. bad cop mm-hmm. because you know and I do beat myself up about it a lot because I feel like am I too harsh on her but then I think she don't have her dad to do that so when you are stable with a you know n- nice guy I do feel like you'll think you know I should have children it does change so as a single mother I mean I mean I mean Gussie, <laughs> as a single mother what would you say to our young because there's many young ones out there yeah. and, I, and I think sometimes young people they don't really 
you know, really think deeply about the future. They tend to take mm -hmm. actions before they think. I mean, what would you, give, as a young mother mm -hmm. who's single now, yeah. what would your what would your advice be to them? My advice would be the best thing you can give your child is a family. And I feel like a lot of single mothers don't know because they've come from broken homes as well. Mm. I mean, I have five sisters who, well, four of them are all married and I see the big difference. And you know, my daughter comes and asks me, how comes my dad doesn't mm. live, with, live with me? And that does, you know, break your heart as a mother. So for single mothers, I do feel like you should wait and I know it sounds so typical and cliche but when you have that security it's so much easier for you as a to be a mum mm. it lays a lot it takes a lot off your shoulders <laughs> can I can say something <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> do you feel the pressure because I get this I get this because oh, I'm married and I get this oh, where are you gonna have the child where are you gonna have the child where are you gonna have the child where are you gonna... and I'm trying to think oh, don't, 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 but I don't want to break your heart so I just say it's coming <laughs> You never know, it could coming. be coming, could be coming, you just never know. Because my husband also doesn't want to have children, but if he did say to me, I want to have children, then you I would have children. Well, of lovely. course, if we're married. So I, I'm, I'm, not like, I'm not like anti children. I do love children very much. I have I've a wonderful seen you niece. Children. Yeah, yeah. You're amazing. I love, love children. children. <laughs> but I, my husband and I both made decisions we don't want. But if he did turn around and say, no, actually, I do really want a child. So I'm not going to be, no, we've discussed this and I said no. But <laughs> we have, I would change my mind. Of course I would. But I want to find out from you, how do you feel? Do you ever get that pressure from other women? Like, where is the child? Do you get this from your family? Why are you not having kids? I don't get it from my family because I think they pretty much know. Perfect. But when you said when you said about you find the perfect man, my simple answer was going to be for me. <laughs> I am with somebody. Uh, the perfect man is somebody who is who doesn't want children like I don't. Yeah, <laughs> and so, and I am with that perfect the person. Sometimes um, that is the case. And I don't know if, if he did change his mind that I would mm. either. And I, I've, I've had a couple of friends over the years who have been uh, with somebody or married to somebody and been with them knowing and got married knowing that they didn't want children. Then one of them's changed their mind and it's, it's ruined the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly the point. But then it comes down to people, you know, each their own, I guess. But yeah, yeah for me, the perfect person was somebody who didn't want to have children either. But I do get a bit of pressure from friends. Mm. But you just say, no, we, we just You're don't want them. You're strong, aren't you? You're strong. I don't know. Am I? Am I? <laughs> is, is, is she? <laughs> is she? <laughs> right, can we hear from our young lady? Because you're Very a young good. mom as well. Yes. Are you single? You're married? Single. Okay. Yes, single. So how has your experience been as a single mom? It's really, really hard. Um, because, first of all, having to raise a child by yourself, it's a whole new experience. You don't know what to do. Especially, exactly. Um, I mean, it's like, um, thank God I had my mum, so she's very so helpful. So you've had a lot of support from, yes. your, pet, from your parents. That's why it's always good. If, if you're going through that, it's good to have well, your family by your side and supporting you on that. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard because you go through, besides the, uh, the, prop, the issues that you already have on the outside, mm -hmm. you have your own insecurities. Yes, yes. Example, only now that I feel like I'm a good enough mum, mm -hmm. But before, I thought I was really, really bad mm -hmm. because it's like, example, when it comes to discipline, because um, my parent, my dad was always strict, mm -hmm. so I tend not to be too strict on him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I let him do whatever he wants. And but then you have people then talking mm -hmm. and saying, control your child. And then mm -hmm. that makes you feel bad. You feel so bad. Oh, my God, I'm a bad mom. Mm -hmm. And then when you're too strict and then when you do those puppy eyes, you're like, <laughs> Oh. Oh. Rosanna, this reminds me of something called the burnt toast syndrome. Does, anybody, right. has, does anyone know about this? Burnt toast syndrome, ever heard of it? No? All right, let me reveal. So, in a nutshell, a burnt toast syndrome is where a person is conditioned to put others first and therefore puts themselves last. Hence, giving themselves this piece of burnt toast their children, so their children will not get the burnt toast, they'll have it instead. This, selfish, this selflessness might not um, sound like a crime, but eventually the sufferer has a tendency of becoming deeply resentful. Wow, mm. gosh. As so the, the mums are so used to giving, 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 and later on they can be resentful, especially if they don't get anything in return. Mm. Wow, have any of these mothers ever resented your children? Mm. Mm? Well, I'm not. You're not a mom, but I'm a mom, but I've seen it. You've seen, I've seen children like, being resented. Yeah, in my own family. Right. But don't you want to just naturally do that? Don't you naturally want to give, 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 give as a mom? Not always. Not always. Don't I, think, I think you should. 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 I think
I think you should. I think as a mother you should, but I think I'm sure in some cases, I suppose mm. that not every mother is going to be yeah. wanting to sacrifice. But I don't know why stepping back. I mean, like for example, there's, like I do think of like Mother's Day, you know there's some children that really go all out for their mums and make them feel special, and other mums just feel like they've been despised, they get a phone call, a little phone call, nothing, don't even know what's going on in yeah. the child's life. And I think it's stuff like that, okay, you, you, you're you conditioned to give, 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 but a little, you know, hello mum, how you doing? Just you know, a phone call. That phone call. I yes. think that's when they start to feel the burnt toast syndrome. Hold on, I've sacrificed my life that's for you. Right. And all I need is a little phone call to say, how are you doing mum? Yeah. Oh, are you sick today? Let me come over and make you some food. You don't get that. And I think mm -hmm. that's another reason why some people don't want to have kids, because they just think, well, I'm going to do this whole burnt syndrome thing and, you know, when I get old, they're going to put me in a care home. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, People think this. Yeah. And a few years ago, my mum felt the same way. She opened up to me and my brother because she's just like, I gave so much of myself. Now you guys are big. You guys have left me. And her idea, she's very old fashioned. I had children to look after me when I'm bigger. So mm. then sometimes when we're busy, she's just like, where is she calls that? Like, how many times? You guys are not picking up my phone calls. And it's not that we don't care, but her idea of what to have children and what it was, she feels like resented sometimes if we don't spend as much time together. But um, so I understand in the sense of how a parent may feel. So. Well, wow, I well, think well, you're the last one well. to speak, Mr. Chana, because look, we're coming to the end of our program. And yeah, my day is, what are your final words, Sammy? I mean, my final word is exactly what I said before. I think as a parent myself, it's not easy. We, we can't we can't lie about that. It's hard work. It takes sacrifice. I think you really do mm. have to think twice before you just jump in and have children. But I think when you do have them, always look at your children with good eyes. Mm. Persevere. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what I'm talking from experience. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you see or how they may be going. They may not be the, the most academic child or, you know, because some people, you know, you want to put your child to be yes, a certain yes, way yes. you want them to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not meant to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, have good eyes for them, persevere with them and support your children. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Sam. That was lovely. And thank you guys very much for coming to sharing your opinions. Vicky, love that product. We'll look love into that. <laughs> now listen, motherhood is a very big topic that we can't cover in today's show. And one thing I would like to leave you with today is that normally when you're a mum, you do put others before yourself. It becomes the child or the, or the partner. Every Everyone, you are last, but being a mother means that you're an example, you're a role right. model. Whatever you're going to feed into that child is what they're going to come up with. That's the truth. You are planting seeds all the time. That means you have to be well. So do you know what? Mother out there, well done to you. And please take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Only then can your children really, really, really reap the benefits of everything that you're going to give. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.